Here's the Flint and Tinder Wax Trucker Jacket. First time I've ever tried a jacket like this. I was so impressed with it, I spent some nights in bed scrolling on my phone and I got some other gear from Hugbury. Keep watching and I'll show you what I got and also what I'm planning to do with this and other outdoorsy gear. Watch to the end. G'day, how you going? If we haven't met yet, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live and work on, the Wajuk people of Noongabuja. This is my channel Bootlosophy, which usually is full of talks about quality heritage style boots. But I did a review of the uh, Flint and Tinder wax trucker jacket. Uh, check it out up there. And I was so impressed with this that I found some other gear that I liked. And so I reached out to Hutbury and asked for some of those items. So full disclosure, all the items I'm talking about here were provided by Hutbury, and I'll put some affiliate links to the items uh, in the description box below. But this video is not sponsored, and if there's something I don't like about what I see, uh, you bet I'll tell you. <laughs> I chose some of uh, this gear not only because I, I like how they look, uh, at least on the website, but also because I had an idea on how to use some of this along with a couple of pairs of boots and other gear that I already have in a future uh, themed video. So watch to the end and I'll tell you what I'm going to bring you in a couple of months. But first, if you're not familiar with Huckbury, let me tell you about them. Huckbury is a men's uh, outdoor clothing and gear website built like an adventure magazine full of interesting boots, clothing, bags and other bits and pieces. Andy Forch and Richard Greiner founded Huckbury in 2010 as a combination website putting together equal parts adventure journal, store and inspiration for outdoorsy adventure-led living. The website has a journal with such wide topics as uh, movie reviews, motorcycling, uh, interior decor and of course clothes. Uh, pointing towards a lifestyle supported by their brands and products sold on the website. Apart from a wide range of third-party brands of clothing and footwear, uh, bags, EDC, Huckbury also have their own brand of uh, boots called Rhodes. I've reviewed a, a few pairs of boots made by Rhodes, uh, like the Blake Chelsea boot up there. Uh, their own clothing brands are Flint and Tinder, uh, maker of their popular flannel-lined wax cotton trucker jacket, as well as their proof range of clothing. Flint and Tinder is their outdoor clothing line, uh, offering jackets, shirts, jeans and pants, including uh, travel and comfortable adventure clothing. Proof is, I suppose, what you'd call their athletic leisure line, offering more of the t-shirts, polos and stretchy pants made from merino wool, fleece and other natural materials, uh, like their 72-hour series and their rover and passport series of clothes. There's a bit of a crossover sometimes, like the Flint and Tinder 365 pant and the Proof Rover pant. So now, let's go through what I selected for this video uh, and that idea I had for, for a future video. First up is the Flint and Tinder flannel lined waxed Hudson jacket. I chose uh, this color called Havana, which is a mid-brown uh, made from English tech wax material from the British Millerin Company. This is a heavy warm jacket. Uh, shame we're heading into our uh, summer down here. Uh, I'll go into the guts of it in a minute. Then there's the Flint and Tinder 10-year full zip hoodie, one of the heaviest I've ever come across in Australia, where we're more used to the lighter, you know, cotton fleece type hoodies. I was especially taken by the structure of the hood, keeping it uh, up my neck instead of flopping behind my back. Uh, then, moving on to a proof product, uh, I've got this 72-hour merino t-shirt in navy. You can't get a white merino product because wool doesn't bleach very well, apparently. So I went for something dark. I have a couple of Australian merino t-shirts from Pair, P-A-I-R-E, in Melbourne. And I wanted to compare this one with those. I'll tell you what I think in a minute. Finally, another article from Proof, uh, the Rover Pant. This is a work pant style pant that's basically a five pocket pant with comfort features like a, a gusseted crotch and darts behind the knees. Okay, so let's go through each of these 
uh, articles before I tell you the idea that I have for the, for the video. This is Huckbury's Flint and Tinder brand flannel lined waxed Hudson jacket. It's a mouthful for a really attractive hunter's jacket, uh, or in England, sometimes referred to as a poacher's jacket. And it even has the uh, poacher's pocket at the back, which has two snap button closures on both sides and extends all the way through the lower back. In England, where it originated, it's called a poacher's pocket because poachers could snag a couple of pheasants and basically shove them around the back and walk off the estate like carrying them in a backpack. This Hudson jacket is made from the British Millerain Company's uh, wax canvas called Tech Wax. British Millerain is an old English company based in Lancashire in the north of England, where it can, uh, from personal experience, uh, it can be very dark and wet most of the time. It's heavily waxed so waterproof, but feels soft in the hand, uh, if not a, a little tacky when new. It's clearly going to patina quite nicely as the wax wears and cracks at the elbows and across the front where you touch it uh, all the time. It should also show wear uh, near the seat and on the back. I'm a little cautious that it doesn't rub wax off onto the uh, good furniture at home or onto the car seat. There's enough of it when new that my hands feel a little sticky after handling it. Not a totally pleasant experience, but it does wear off. The lining is a dark green plaid, 100% uh, cotton flannel, and also very soft to the touch and certainly warm in cool weather. There's an interesting trim inside the edge uh, and of, of the opening, as well as under the collar, which is 100% cotton green corduroy. The texture is nice. There's a tactile feel to sort of identifying the edges uh, of when you flip up the collar. Although I have to say I would have preferred to have the outside of the collar uh, lined with corduroy like some barber jacket so that you feel the warmth of the corduroy against your skin when you turn it up. Uh, it's a little over hip long and the solid brass YKK zip opens two ways. It zips upwards to close of course, but then once closed you can also use the bottom pull tab to unzip from the bottom. Useful if you need to reach inside a high jean pocket or maybe to unzip your fly in order to take a slash in the woods. Uh, pocket wise, there's plenty. It has two uh, waist flap pockets with uh, flaps to cover against rain. It has a slightly above the waist also flat pocket uh, on the right side, very deep. I can get my whole hand in there. Uh, useful for things you want to keep dry and keep separate from things in the waist pockets, like maybe maps and papers. Uh, behind the waist pockets are two hand warmer pockets. Again, deep and generous. Inside, there is a breast pocket on the left-hand side, uh, good for phones and wallets. And of course, at the back, the poacher's pocket talked about earlier. Sizing is standard to me. Uh, I'm, I'm 175 centimeters or five foot nine, and I weigh 73 kilograms or about 160 pounds. My waist is 33 inches plus a bit, and my chest is 38 inches. Following the website uh, sizing guide, I ordered a medium, and while it's the right size and feels comfortable 90% of the time, wearing a thick jumper like, say, a cable knit, I felt my arms, and particularly around my biceps, a, a little restricted. Now, I do not have guns. <laughs> if you're stockier than I am, or if you have thick arms, or if you intend to wear thick jumpers, I would consider sizing up, I think. Uh, that was the only disappointment, that it was snug with a layer underneath, which I thought was pretty fundamental for a winter jacket. This is a lot warmer than the wax trucker jacket, and as we warm up uh, in our summer, uh, I feel I've lost the opportunity to wear it more often. For those who keep count, the Hudson jacket is made in Indonesia. It sells for 348 US on the website, and there is a link below. Moving on, this is the Flint and Tinder 10-year full zip hoodie. Uh, it's a full zip hoodie to differentiate it from the pullover hoodie and I find this more useful because you don't have to uh, mess up hats, glasses, hair uh, and tucked in shirts as you struggle putting in a, a pullover hoodie uh, on and off. I'm not sure if you can tell but this is navy and it comes in five other colours including a nice autumnal rust red. In Australia, we're not used to these types of structured hoodies. Uh, ours tend to be soft flannel, cotton, blouson style hoodies, and the hood, hood itself is usually not lined. 
uh, certainly not as solid. It's made from a 12 ounce fleece from South Carolina, but on the outside, it feels like a super thick uh, denim or even canvas, close weaved enough to feel windproof. As the materials, uh, all the materials are from the US, okay? So from the fleece to the heavy duty full length zip, uh, even the twill tape that's used to reinforce the uh, uh, seams. And it's all put together in Los Angeles, which showing my ignorance, has never struck me as a garment manufacturing city. It's called a 10-year hoodie because it comes with a 10-year guarantee. The guarantee covers any rips, tears, or coming apart of the seams, but understandably, not for stains or burns or corrosion. Not bad, and it does feel like it will last 10 years. And while it may soften for comfort, I think we'll still stay sturdy. As I said, I've never come across a hoodie as substantial as this. According to the tags, it can be machine washed and tumble dried, but it can't be bleached or ironed. Some other bits. There's the obligatory pockets uh, at the hand warming position. The draw cord for the hoodie is substantial and have brass aglets or tips. And uh, there's a small pocket about uh, rib high uh, for a phone. This is the first hoodie that I've had that has an inside pocket. <laughs> the hood is, for me, uh, something to behold because it's structured with a double layer lining uh, and it stands proud on your neck and it doesn't flop on your back. It's nicely shaped so that pulled over your head, it doesn't collapse and cover your eyes, but it's still substantial enough that it should uh, keep light rain off your eyes. As for sizing, while the website says true to size, making me a medium, their sizing guide shows a guy at five foot nine, my height, uh, that he should be ordering a small. So I went with small and the fit is really good. I think I'd pay more attention to the examples of models that they talk about in the sizing guide than just go true to size. Look, I love this hoodie. For me, it's immediately replaced all my thinner Aussie bought hoodies, uh, including hoodies that I bought from Country Road and uh, American brands like Gantt and Polo. It sells for 128 US on the website. And again, look for the link below. Next is the Proof 72 hour Merino wool t-shirt. I've actually been wearing this a lot and I put it through a couple of washes already. A wool wash is recommended, but I thought I'd try to test it and put it through a normal wash. Came out fine. It kept its shape and everything. This one is a navy uh, and you can get two fits. The performance fit like this one, which is slimmer, or the classic fit, which is looser. Once again, I followed Huckberry's sizing guide and ordered a medium, which is my normal size, and it fits really well, bearing in mind it is a slim fitting tee. I'm on the edge though. I think that if I had a marginally bigger chest, I'd probably go for a classic fit or size up in this slimmer fit. Uh, the features I like are that it's 87% merino wool, 13% nylon, whereas I have an Australian made uh, t-shirt from merino and cotton, and which I feel gets more uh, shapeless after a couple of washes, probably because of that cotton uh, component. The collar is close around my neck, which I really like. I'm not a fan of t-shirts where the collar is loose and open. I think it's called the 72 hour tea because the merino content is antimicrobial, meaning that it resists little smelly microbes from your skin that make regular cotton teas a bit smelly. And the 72 hours is meant to define how long you can wear it for. So I did. <laughs> I wore it under my shirt at the office on a Friday, not particularly straining activity, I know. Uh, but then I wore it on a Saturday uh, to prune fruit trees, about four hours of sweaty up and down ladders and wielding chainsaws and loppers. And then on Sunday, I was relaxing and true enough, the sweat from Saturday wicked and dried off in a few minutes in the breeze and it did not stink on Sunday. In fact, after hanging it up on Sunday night, I reckon I could have worn it again at least one more day. As a base layer and as an outer t-shirt, it was really comfortable. The material is soft and not itchy. And as a temperature regulator on Saturday and the air temperatures was about 16 Celsius. And I felt warm with just a t-shirt on underneath a, a loose work shirt. I have since worn it to Darwin when the temperature was just under 36 Celsius, feeling like 40, I think. And while it wasn't exactly cool, I certainly wasn't uncomfortable. It's made in Indonesia with New Zealand wool. My only complaint is that the wool is from New Zealand, not Australia. I mean, 
they're still trying to claim Sam Neill as one of theirs, you know. <laughs> Just joking. The 72-hour Merino T sells for 88 US dollars on their website. Finally, this is the Proof Rover Pant. It's in a straight grey in 73% cotton drill with a bit of recycled polyester and 2% lycra for a little stretch comfort. The recycled polyester material is actually trademarked as Reprieve, R-E-P-R-E-V-E, -E, True Temp 36.5, uh, which regulates temperature so you don't get too hot or too cold. I haven't proven it in the field, but it feels good. Uh, you can get uh, the rover pant in straight leg or like this one in slim fit. I got it in my usual 32 inch waist, but it's actually a bit roomy for a slim fit pant. It's definitely vanity size because as I said, I'm actually a 33 inch waist, maybe a bit more. <laughs> and this fits more like a 34 in my opinion. Sometimes I buy a 30 inch waist and that fits me in some jeans and five pocket pants. Uh, better than maybe I should have got uh, uh, in others. Maybe I should have got a 30 inch. I do hate vanity sizing in clothes, especially pants. As it is, it fits me like a relaxed pant, which I'm okay with as I, I wear both cuts uh, in my pants. Some of the features I like are the uh, gusseted crotch, giving you a bit more comfort in the ghoulies when you squat, as well as the dart uh, behind the knees that help with the comfort as you kneel and squat. There are, as you'd expect, uh, five pockets being two front, two back, and a coin pocket uh, that's big enough to put in a couple of Olympic medals for coins. <laughs> I mean, it's big. Uh, it goes right across the width of the front pocket that it sits in. While unexpected, I'm finding this quite useful because I usually slip in an EDC knife and mini torch into the fifth pocket. And then I find getting them out a bit of a struggle and quite ungainly when you're trying to show off manly EDC like, you know, us manly folks do. <laughs> I got the pant just as our weather turned, so I've had a chance to wear it on a day that was quite cold and wet. And, and then the next few weeks in a warm, sunny spring day that got to the 30 Celsius mark. And I found the pant very comfortable in both temperatures. Still new and unwashed, they feel a little stiff because of the canvas-like drill material. But I can see that it will soften, and I think a patina will develop uh, just like jeans. Uh, the rover pant is made in Indonesia. On their website, the Proof Rover Pant sells for 118 US. And I like it so much, I'm actually going to buy another pair in olive in the 30-inch waist and see how uh, or if that fits better. Well, there you go. Uh, I thought this was a reasonable swag from Hugbury to get on with. And if you agree, click on the like button. Particularly if you want to see more of this and I, I know what to make in terms of videos. Oh, and uh, what was the gripping idea I had for a video involving these as well as some other gear that I already own? Do you know, I thought I'd do a survival challenge. It's been a while since I've been out in the rough field. It will take me a few months to put together because I have to wait for the right backpack to arrive from dalesleatherworks.com. I'm loving to show that off. Uh, watch out for that in the coming months or better yet, click on subscribe so you're notified. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon.